Good evening. Welcome to uh, Nilla South. Thank you so much for joining me uh, this evening as I get ready to cook in my kitchen. Tonight we are going to be making a homemade etouffee. Uh, so excited to show you that recipe. Uh, we live in South Louisiana and this is just one of the dishes that's kind of famous in this area. Um, I'm also going to be making a walnut and cranberry wheat bread that I'm pretty excited about making and possibly even a dessert. So thank you so much for joining me tonight and cooking with me. We'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we'll start out, um, I'm gonna start out on high heat. Okay, so I'll go ahead and uh, put one stick of salted butter in the pan and let that start melting down. And tonight we are making a shrimp etouffee. You can make this with either crawfish or shrimp, but I am going to um, use shrimp for tonight. So one of the things a lot of people do is they'll want to put the shrimp or the crawfish in too early. You really don't want to do that because they don't take very long to cook. And so that's going to be something we'll add in later. Okay, now I'm going to come in with, this is olive oil and fresh garlic that I uh, froze. I minced the olive oil and the garlic and froze that together. And then I will come in with some onions. Bell peppers. It's about a cup of each. Onions, bell peppers. Celery, about a half a cup of celery. And about a half a cup of green onions. I'm also going to come in with some chives in a minute. Some chives. Some parsley start cooking this down okay I will season this with a little bit of Tony Sachery's or Cajun seasoning this is just the one that we really like put into about two and a half. That's about equivalent, a little over a teaspoon right there. And then I have some seasoned salt. Around a teaspoon of that. And just some regular salt, half teaspoon. This is uh, on high, and I'm going to let those onions cook down with a little bit translucent. So what's in here right now, um, the vegetables, that's called the trinity, is what they call that. And, um, for Cajuns, that's just uh, the vegetables, that, the onions, the bell peppers, the parsley, and the onions, bell peppers, parsley. I also add garlic and celery. Okay. Okay, now we just a little bit of flour to make, uh, making a blonde roux. That's basically um, what this is referred to as. So I'll turn it down a little bit. It's different than a, than a gumbo. Room, it's a different, it's, it's lighter basically. You're just kind of using it to thick it, but you don't want to start turning this roux brown. So it's a blonde roux. 
Uh, I'm making one recipe of this tonight, so one pound of shrimp is what I'll be adding in. And I'm basically going to cook it, keep it light, but also cook that flour taste out of it, that, that raw flour taste, as I am cooking it down. Okay. And now I'm going to come in with uh, some tomato sauce and tomato paste. I'm not going to add the sauce just yet. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, diced tomatoes. Sorry, I'm going to put diced tomatoes and tomato sauce So this will be my diced. can turn my fire back up. For your liquid. If you want to add a little bit of chicken broth instead of just plain water, it will add some flavor. It's probably only about a cup of this, a cup and a half of chicken broth. And let that start cooking down. A bright red, more of like a pink. So I'm not going to put a ton of this tomato sauce, probably about half of it. Only let it start cooking down and it will thicken. To that, I'm going to add some garlic powder, not salt, garlic powder, just a little bit. Some onion powder, granulated onion. And now as it begins to cook down, I'm going to go ahead and add in one pound of uh, raw, oops, raw shrimp. <laughs> they're all, um, have been, they're almost all the way unfrozen, so it'll take a minute from the break apart. And I'm just going to keep this on high to let it cook down and thicken. I'm also going to add in a little bit of Louisiana hot sauce. It's one of our favorite um, hot sauces, but we will add this just to add a little bit of spice, but not too much. Just probably about five drops. And this is starting to really thicken, just to kind of show you the consistency of it is changing. Put those shrimp all just a little late, but they are breaking apart. I'll let this continue to cook down. I'm kind of a pro at cooking um, meat from almost frozen or frozen. I think uh, that's a working mom thing. While this cooks down, I'm going to go ahead and start um, proofing my yeast for the bread and then we'll come back to this and show you kind of how this is looking. Okay, so I'll start letting this yeast uh, proof. This is for uh, cranberry walnut bread that I'm making. Um, as this etouffee cooks down, um, I'll be stirring behind me every now and then, but um, I'm going to go ahead and let my yeast start proofing. And then we will come back to the A2 bake. Okay. So I'll need one and a half cups of 
lukewarm water. Once again, uh, the temperature that I'm looking for with lukewarm uh, for yeast harvesters is um, about the temperature that you would bathe a baby at. If it's too hot, it'll kill the, um, the active ingredients in the yeast. If it's not hot enough, it won't, uh, it won't proof. So that's kind of the, the magic uh, right there. So we'll come in here with two teaspoons of yeast. Move that out of the way. So one, two teaspoons of yeast and a tablespoon of olive oil and two tablespoons of brown sugar. Two tablespoons of brown sugar and a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna pack that at one. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. And then a tablespoon of olive oil. And then I will leave this to sit so it can start foaming up uh, nicely. Olive oil and brown sugar and then I will leave this and let it start proofing and go back to the etouffee now okay so this is kind of that it's more of a like orangey color this is a really fast recipe too it's it, it doesn't take long um, to make an etouffee okay so I have the color is definitely the color that I'm looking for um, and in a minute, I'm going to give it a taste. I'm kind of letting all the shrimp cook down before I do that. Almost there with the shrimp. I don't want to put too much salt because I did use chicken broth uh, to give that some flavor. So, okay. Give that a taste. I am going to add a little bit more of the Cajun seasoning. About a teaspoon. The spoon on this jar is very small, so. And then one of the seasoned salt. gonna be so good mm. this really is almost all the way done like two more minutes and it will be done that's how fast this meal is it's absolutely delicious I'm gonna go ahead and get a little rice so I can kind of show you what this looks like once it's uh, completely finished Just to see, this is so, it's so beautiful. Don't be shy with your vegetables. Make sure that you put plenty um, of the Trinity and the garlic. Um, it really gives it flavor. I think I can go ahead and turn this down. I'll show you what this looks like plated up. Oh my goodness. Absolutely delicious. So little, don't be shy with that sauce. Okay. This is um, etouffee. Give it a taste. Make sure everybody's going to like it. Make sure you get shrimp in this bite. Okay. I'm getting down to business. Very hot, very hot. Okay, I keep saying okay. I told you I overly use that word. Mmm, amazing. And this is how we do it. And we'll go back to our bread in just a second. This is so good. 
Welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, the cranberry walnut uh, bread now. Uh, this is three cups of whole wheat flour. In this recipe, I do use whole wheat flour. So, um, get that in here. Okay. And then I also need two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons of salt and I'll mix that around. Okay, and now I also have my uh, mixture with the uh, yeast, brown sugar water and olive oil for that in okay. and i had gotten my vanilla out but this doesn't actually call for vanilla so we'll put this here and before i add in my walnuts and my cranberries i'm just going to give this a mix And while that's mixing, I do want to break my uh, walnuts. I put about two thirds cup of walnuts in here, but I do want to uh, crush it up a little bit. I don't want big, big, big pieces. I'm gonna crush these just a little bit. I always just use a jar and a Ziploc bag. It's probably a fancier method to do this, but this is what I do. And it works just fine. Okay, and then I'm also going to need for the cranberries, three-fourths cup of cranberry. This is one-fourth, two. Okay, three-fourths cup of cranberry. And now I have my also my um, two-thirds cup of walnuts. So I'll be going in there in a minute. So we'll come in, scrape that flour down just a little bit. And see how this looks. Oh, yes, this is going to be perfect. This could be three to three and a half cups of flour. So right now I have three. I always start with a three. And then uh, look, I might add just a little bit more. And I am gonna come in here with a half cup more of flour. It's a little bit um, wetter consistency right now. So I'll slowly do this in case I don't need it all. And bread is just, it's one of those things, like, you just kind of have to get used to what what it is, the texture um, of what your finished product is. It takes a little time to do that, but you will get there. And then slowly with my other half cup. And then I should slowly see this kind of start cleaning the sides. And that's how I know where we're supposed to be. Let me give it a mix again. Remainder. This is a wetter dough for this um, recipe. So because of that, it does require a little bit more uh, work on my part to mix it all together for the need. Okay, 
So I'll go ahead now and add in my uh, cranberries and walnuts. Don't be shy with those. And I could probably do the rest without the KitchenAid. And then I'll get me a bowl and oil that. Just gonna put a little vegetable oil in here. And then with this, into the bowl and then let this rise. It's first rise. And this is much, uh, much of a looser, I guess, bread than the one that I normally make, like for sandwich bread. But it is gonna be just perfect. Okay, so we'll put that in there and I'll cover it to allow it to start rising. spray of oil and then I'm gonna let this do what it does it's gonna be so good okay welcome back to Nilla uh, Sal thank you so much for joining me again uh, we're getting ready now to make a uh, I call it old-timer uh, southern egg custard so that's what we're gonna start right now just to tell you what I have in here already pre-measured I have three and a half cups of whole milk uh, don't try to use skim milk or two percent milk three and a half cups of whole milk and a uh, half a cup of half and half so i'm going to put the heat on high and i want to warm this up and i'll say keep this measuring cup out because once that i get my milk uh, to the right heat i'll actually put it back in here because then i need it to cool back down a little bit I don't want to put it in too hot. While I'm waiting on that, I will need six eggs. Six eggs. I'm going to stir this uh, kind of vigorously because I really don't want it to uh, scald. But I do want it to start foaming. I do have the oven three heating to 325. Okay, I do have a good foam now on top of this. So I am going to kill the heat. And just let that sit a second. Okay. And now I have my egg mixture, so I'll bring that over to the mixer and tell you what I'll add to that to get started. Okay, so I have six eggs in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna beat those just a little bit first by themselves on hot. I'll the milk over here. And I'm moving this into this glass so it can cool just a little bit because I, do, I don't want it to cook the egg. Whenever I put it in. Okay. I have those six eggs. Uh, did beat those really good. And I'm going to add in two teaspoons of vanilla. two teaspoons of vanilla, and a half a cup of sugar. I have a fourth of a cup here, so I'm gonna put two. Half a cup of sugar, and I'll mix that again. I'm 
gonna incorporate um, about a tea, little over a teaspoon of vanilla, but I put my spoon up already, so I'm just gonna do this by. You really can't mess up too much with the nutmeg. It makes it delicious. Okay, now, whenever I do, I'm gonna put a little bit more nutmeg. Whenever I do start putting this milk mixture in, I'm gonna go in there slowly with it because I don't want it to cook the eggs. Very important. So slowly, I'll come in with my milk. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, pour this into the ramekins. Uh, I will link these in the description. These uh, I purchased on Amazon. It's just uh, oven safe dishes. So the least messy way to do this is I'm going to take this mixture and come back into my measuring cup with it for my pour into my cups. It'll be way less messy because I have, and they're not going to rise. So you can go pretty full with these. I got a lot of foam on those. Yep. Definitely got more foam on these. Okay. So, now, whenever you go into the oven with this, is you're actually going to create a water bath around them. So, I'll kind of show you what that looks like. It's way easier to do in the oven um, than to do now. And it is already um, hot. So, I will get my pan and come into the oven with the custard on 325 and then I will take my water and pour it into and I'm making a mess let me get my towel I'll get it in a second okay so I'm going to take this and pour it into my get a better bottle to do this with trial and error Go into my pan meticulously without get. I don't want to get anything on the uh, custards themselves. So just make sure you stay on the outside of the custard. And this water bath will help it to cook evenly. Okay. Hold that. And I'll let that cook about 40 minutes show you what it looks like in the end. Thank you. Okay, so we have the custard in the oven and the bread is uh, rising right now, first rise. Uh, we'll come back in a few minutes and I will show you uh, what the custard finished product looks like. And that's gonna take about 40 minutes and I will also um, show you the bread uh, before we put it into the oven and then after when it comes out of the oven. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. I just wanted to kind of show you the um, end of the custard that is I'm about to take out of the oven. And then I also want to um, show you kind of what the bread uh, mixture looks like. I did uh, go ahead and put that into uh, the bread pan. I just want to kind of show you that, um, what this looks like. And... I set it uh, to get it to rise a little faster. I did put it uh, right here on top of the uh, stove, no heat on or anything, but just that little bit of heat from the oven has helped it to rise pretty fast. So, and I'll be taking those custards out and then I changed the temperature uh, on the oven to 375 to match the temperature that I'll need for the bread. It might need to go just a few more minutes. I think I'm gonna let that go a few more minutes. Oh my goodness. And then we'll take this beauty. Can't wait to see how this comes out. Okay. 
So uh, we'll come back to you when those custards come out and also when the bread comes out. Sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top. These are the completed custards. I'm really not putting much. I'm just trying to sprinkle it where it's all over the top. Okay. And then I'm going to come back with my torch. I'm going to caramelize that sugar just a little bit. See it kind of burning down and that's going to make a nice crust. Nice crunchy top on these. That caramelized. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's uh, sizzling. And once these cool, this will give it a nice crunch on top and then it's smooth in the middle. Okay. And that is basically uh, my finished product. So these will go into the refrigerator and uh, let them cool. And then I'll, I do like them hot, but most people, you really are supposed to serve them cool. So, um, absolutely delicious sorry I just finished with the custard cups I'll show you those again but uh, basically uh, what I was saying is whenever you eat one of these everybody might want to get back because you're really gonna want to slap somebody they're so delicious all right thank you so much again for cooking with me uh, this evening I enjoyed having you in my kitchen and I look forward to seeing you again happy new year